think it's time to be done with the introductions and move on to our actual program. Um, I'll be talking about several topics today. The first one will be taxation. I'm sure that's uh, interesting. If, there's a, if there are any uh, investors here, have you invested in cryptocurrencies? Just one? All right, there's, there's several. All right, that's cool. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm going to start with taxation. I'm going to later going to be talking about uh, what problems uh, blockchain and cryptocurrencies may solve. I'm going to be talking about energy consumption, specifically on, on Bitcoin. I'm sure you've heard that it, it uh, takes more electricity than uh, certain countries, whatever that means. And uh, in my opinion, the most important thing, I'm going to be talking about uh, starfish organizations, uh, as in uh, decentralized organizations, flat organizations against the uh, hierarchical and, and pyramid organizations. And I think that will be interesting for you guys to know how the future companies, in my opinion, will be, uh, will be organized. And I can't stress enough, let's put the disclaimer up there, um, even though I'm, I'm uh, representing consensus here as well, I'm speaking as a single private person, or well, not single, I'm married, but um, don't trust me, don't trust anything I say, do your own research, you, can, you should listen, sure, uh, about my opinions, uh, but do make your own mind, and uh, I will not be giving any financial advice or otherwise, I will simply be sharing my own experiences, what I've learned, and I hope you can benefit from that. And uh, also, disclaimer, I'm wor currently wor working on uh, two ICOs, an Exolar and Weconomy, which I'll also be uh, discussing later in the end. And um, also, if you have any questions during the, during the presentation, I normally like to save it to the end, but uh, if you have something to add or you feel like I'm uh, giving you uh, wrong information, please do raise your hand and interrupt me. Or if you have a really important thing to add, and I, I'll, I will appreciate that, and I will take your question. All right, let's uh, let's move into. The, oh yeah, one more thing. Uh, yeah, I'm a generalist, so I'm not a tax expert. I'm not a coding expert. I'm not expert on anything. So I know uh, kind of a large scope of things, but once we go into the like micro level of uh, understanding of certain as aspects, then I'll fall short, and I will uh, default for somebody who knows better. But hopefully, I can provide some value here. All right, so let's talk about investing and in uh, capital gains first. So I'm sure uh, if you looked into that, it should be quite clear that if, if you are um, realizing profits, and by realizing profits means that well, maybe you bought uh, Bitcoin for like 100 euros and it doubled in price and then it's 200 euros, and then you buy, uh, let's say, a phone that costs exactly 200 euros, then you are realizing a 100 euro profit, which will be a taxable event. So if you buy something uh, that is a real life asset, uh, or real life uh, a thing or a service, uh, you are trading it into uh, so-called official currencies like euros or dollars, it will create a taxable event for the amount that you, ha you got a value increase. But at least in Finland, it doesn't work the other way. So if you make uh, losses, uh, there is no way to deduct that. So that's something to keep in mind. And this is the uh, regulation currently. It may change. And different countries, of course, vary. I, I obviously have the most information about the situation in Finland. But I'm go also going to, in the end of the presentation, touch on uh, a couple other places that I've, I've looked at. And, and partly because I'm, uh, why I'm interested in this is because we are incorporating one of our ICOs and, and we're also looking for optional places. Uh, one, one thing that is an uh, interesting question is the trading between different coins or tokens. So uh, in US, it seems that they have taken the stance that those are also taxable events. In Finland, this is not the case yet. And in most countries, this is not the case. So you are free to... Um, make transactions between, let's say, Bitcoin and Ethereum. And even if you have some value increase, you won't, uh, it won't be treated as a taxable event. But in the US, it's a different, different story and a lot of things. Yes? Yeah, I think you're correct. I think uh, the implementation will be super tricky. Because how, uh, first of all, uh, you would have to get all the information from the exchanges, each and every transaction. Somebody actually needs to go through those or program some uh, bot to go through those. I'm sure they're working on it. But yeah, that's, uh, that's true. I don't think it's, uh, but that's something to keep in mind that will be 
probably going on everywhere else as well, because if it goes in the U.S., I think some other countries are going to follow and try to tax each and every, um, each and every uh, transfer between coins, so something to keep in mind. And one thing, of course, to combat this is to use a decentralized exchange wh which doesn't do KYC, and KYC is uh, know your cu customer procedure, so they won't list any of your details. So then that will make it extremely hard and um, almost impossible for anybody to find out if you bought a cryptocurrency. But of course, it's your personal responsibility. Do whatever you want with this information. So um, there's some countries like um, Germany, for example, that when you use cryptocurrency as payment, it will be uh, the, the value increase will be tax exempt, which I, I think personally is, is great. And I heard this from uh, uh, Mikko Alasaral, who is from, who is the CEO of Inbot, and he will be talking uh, in the end as well. And yeah, that was really interesting. And another thing is uh, hodling. Um, who knows what hodl means? Really? Yeah, not, not, not more people. That means, uh, well, it's a it's a mis misspell of uh, the world hold, and so I think it was uh, conceived around uh, 2013 crash, maybe when when it was the, when it was the horrible bear market. And this one guy on Reddit, I think, was having a little bit uh, too much whiskey and then getting a little bit emotional and misspelling the word. And uh, I hope he's still hodling uh, because it's, it became a, a real meme within the, within the industry. So what that means is you're, you're going to hold on for long term. So you're a long-term th long thinker. I mentioned earlier how Bitcoin changed the way that I think about uh, money and value. And for me, it means that I'm... I'm, I've, I've become a holder, I've become a believer in this technology. So that means for me, uh, one Bitcoin is going to be one Bitcoin. And that's what I care about, getting more of that, because I want to uh, be a part of the technological um, evolution that I believe in. So it's kind of like a belief, but it's, it's also a technique, because if you hold or hodl, uh, there will be no taxable events, obviously, because you're not realizing anything. So. Uh, you might want to wait until the regulation is a little bit more clear or maybe more favorable, or maybe you, you move to another country on, and uh, that has a favorable regulation. Uh, holding can be a good tool for that. And of course, it means that you only invest in the amount. And, and again, this is not a, I'm not telling you to invest, I'm just telling you how I feel. So if, if um, you, you are investing, you should only put in as much as you're willing to lose entirely. And so, so that uh, creates a situation. You don't want to be in a situation where you actually need the money that you have invested and the market is going down and you're 60% down, like, like we had the uh, down uh, market from December, um, like uh, almost 80%, 75%, I think. So you don't want that to happen to your life savings, and especially if you need to pay some bills. So um, hodling is, is interesting, but if you go too deep, uh, if you start to get sleepless nights, it might not be the greatest. Um, oh yeah, also I want to mention more about those deductions. Uh, in Finland, at least, if, if uh, talking about capital gains, uh, you can make, I know that there are some cases that people have been approved uh, to make some deductions, like for example, your computer, if you're a day trader or you use Obviously, you need to use a lot of electricity uh, to keep your computer on and, and run it. And these kind of expenses can be uh, deducted in, in the taxation. So that's something interesting to keep in mind if you decide to do something like this for uh, actual, actual money and not just for a hobby. Um, moving on. So there's other kinds of ways that you might get taxed uh, using cryptocurrencies, and one is mining. So um, we talk about mining a little bit later on the more technical side. But basically what mining is, is uh, securing the network and getting a reward uh, for doing so. There are multiple projects that you can still mine with uh, home gear, or you can buy an ASIC, which, which the, um, means a computer that is just made for mining a certain uh, algorithm. Uh, and you, you can use those and turn your electricity into money. And then, uh, at least in Finland, it becomes income tax. So uh, for, the, for the day of when you mine, uh, the income tax will be calculated and denoted in the local currency of that day with that rate. So you pay income tax based on that. And um, another thing here that comes, comes into play is hodling. So if after that, uh, once you paid the paid the uh, labor tax, income tax, uh, then 
if you still hold, you are still subject to the capital gain tax. So let's say that you mine 100 euros worth of cryptocurrency, and then you will be taxed by 100 euros based on your income tax, uh, tax card. And then you decide to hold it for another year, and then it's, it turns into 200 euros. And then you want to cash out, you buy the, buy the phone again, and then you will be subjected to the um, capital gain tax again. So also something to keep in mind. There are these uh, profitability uh, calculators online that you may want to, want to use. Yes? Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I hope uh, the stream is, is okay as well. I've, I've been known to uh, mess, up, mess with the sound <laughs> with, my, with my shows as well. All right, I'll try to do a little bit better. Um, yeah, so uh, that's something to keep in mind when you make profitability calculations. If you are into uh, this kind of uh, thing with, with mining, which uh, a lot of people say that it might not be worth your trouble because you have to actually put in some hours and you have, you have expenses, you have to get those graphics cards, uh, you have to pay for electricity. I would say normally, I, I, I personally I don't do that because I feel like it, it will be better to just simply buy and hold, but some people are making great success, and I think it's mostly if you if you know um, a good one, if you believe in some uh, project and you mind that and you hope the value will accre increase, then that's something that uh, I think you must take into account when you think if it's profitable or not. So you kind of have to be a speculator if you want to be a profitable miner as well, unless of course you are founding a, a whole big operation of mining farms, which, which is, of course, immensely popular. Uh, excuse me, it's immensely um, profitable. Okay, a little bit about commerce and, and um, making purchases and selling. There's also VAT to consider if you are selling um, goods and services, for example, professionally. So how does that come into play? Well, it's, it's pretty simple. It's like the income tax as well. So the VAT, you have to report based on the uh, daily rate of the cryptocurrency that you've sold, and then you, you will have to uh, pay that VAT uh, to the tax office based on, based on the daily rate. And again, the same thing applies with hodling. Again, you are subject to the capital gains tax should you hold it. So this, this is uh, one reason I, I believe that the most, uh, most companies choose to turn uh, their cryptocurrency earnings into fiat currency right away to cover for expenses and also um, to avoid the volatility risk because you don't want a situation that your livelihood depends on selling those not nuts or uh, dates or what that guy is selling and then the next day there's a crash and you lose 50% of the value, it will be quite bad. So that's why a lot of businesses are, are using these services that uh, convert the cryptocurrency into fiat right away, and then that also makes the taxation and the giving up the VAT rather easy. Of course, there's more and more businesses and consultants that simply charge in, in Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies and, and then never turn it to fiat and just wait for the wait until it becomes a little bit more popular, a little bit more easy to use it, or maybe favorable taxation. Also, something to keep in mind. So I promised a couple examples. I don't have that many, but I've, I've looked into these options. And uh, yeah, I mentioned Germany already. Seems like they have, uh, uh, early this year, they have managed to hammer down a clear regulation. Uh, unfortunately, it's not super easy. And, and it takes a lot of um, reading through and understanding. And uh, one, one reason why, why still I think that not that many businesses are founding their um, ICO or the cryptocurrency or blockchain project in, in Germany because the, well, while there is a clear regulation, it's still a lot of paperwork and there's um, maybe more nimble options for that. Uh, Estonia is not listed here, but uh, I would mention uh, Estonia is one good example of uh, the lack of uh, bureaucracy because it's quite easy for anybody uh, in Europe to found a company using e-residency. So that, that's uh, something that a lot of projects are using. Uh, I mentioned Arizona here because they passed, uh, I believe they passed a bill that you should be able to pay your taxes in cryptocurrency, uh, which is great. Of course, it's not a law yet, but still uh, it, it shows kind of like a direction and hope that this is going to be taken more seriously 
And of course, being legal tender, being able to pay the taxes has, has always been a very important part of money. So that may be a, may be a good thing. Uh, Italy uh, is one of the places that has a personal cryptocurrency tax of 0%, so there's no taxation for now uh, whatsoever if you, if you happen to live in Italy. And Netherlands has extremely low capital gain tax, so it's like we're talking 2-3%, so another attractive option. Uh, USA is uh, probably, um, it's for, uh, quite hard to say, sometimes I, I feel a little bit hopeful when, when the regulators seem to have the right clue. However, there's a lot of uh, strong um, influencers and parties that benefit from the old system so much that I, I'm a little bit hesitant on the regulation and what it's going to mean for cryptocurrencies in, in the U.S. And that's, I, th I think that's one reason why a lot of projects don't uh, accept U.S. investors at all because they don't want to get in trouble with the SEC, uh, which is uh, the secur uh, securities regulator. And... Um, to clarify, securities are, are these like uh, security. We're talking about security tokens in uh, in, in the end as well, uh, and what that means and what tokenizing real life assets means, and that's basically um, when you when you are investing in something and your hope is to benefit, uh, get some dividends or get some um, get some value, long term value from your investment. That's a definition of security. So. What, what a lot of projects are doing is providing just this while there's no regulation. So uh, most of the projects are, in my opinion at least, only licensed securities. So that's something to keep in mind because there has, have been sub, sub, suponas uh, for some projects. That mean, means that the, they have been sued and the, the price of said projects will normally plummet right after that. So if you are invested in a project, then that's probably something you want to want to consider. Will it be declared security at some point and will it be delisted from exchanges? Because the exchanges, obviously, they don't want to take a risk in uh, selling unlicensed securities. All right, that's the end of, um, end of the taxation part. I leave here some of my uh, personal uh, social media channels, you may reach me and find my content. And I also have a private consultancy called Omnifin, uh, which I also represent every time. And I hope you found this in informative, and if you have any questions right now, I will be happy to try and answer them. Yeah, that, that's a good question. Um, how it works is that uh, you don't, if you don't have any uh, real-life connections, that is the term I believe uh, the tax office uses. If you don't have any real-life connections, let's say that your family still lives here, or you, or your apartment is still here, then you can apply for this uh, limit, limited liability on taxes. And I believe that takes around three months to get that, if I'm not totally mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but uh, it, it does require that you actually move there. Not only you have an official address, but you don't have significant property in Finland, for example, or whatever country you're moving out from. And then it takes around um, half a year to process the paperwork. And I, I do think that you can, have a, you can have a summer house, for example, that is not concerned significant property. But I, I think you can e even have like investment houses to some extent, but uh, don't quote me on that. Excellent question. Okay. See any reasonable changes uh, happening? Um, I can't say that I do, unfortunately. We are trying our best, and there is some interest, of course. But uh, based on the um, like previous track record of, of decision makers actually grabbing the ball and, and running with it, I don't hold my breath. But we are, of course, trying our best. You had something to say? I hope, I don't know if this is totally correct, but I think that Bank of Finland has a called meeting together in early June, that in May some papers from Malta has been left to the EU to take some position there, and uh, we follow that up that, that if we hear something new, but that, that is all the information I have or can give from this. Hopefully, this will be in reasonable time that, that we have some comments that, that, that in this scene. 
Yeah, thank you. Yeah, like Marcus mentioned, we are, we do have this uh, this uh, try event that we already had the first part, and we are planning to have the second part after Johannes in 20, uh, 27th for more influencers and more uh, government officials, hopefully. And then we have one one uh, giant event uh, in in the autumn, and that will hopefully be packed with with influential people, and we can we can kind of sell sell this idea. And uh, yeah, then it's basically up to them to grab the ball and, and run. But yeah, we we are doing everything we can. But you gotta be realistic as well. Regulation takes time normally. Uh, good question. Yes, please. Yes, I have a box now. You mentioned tax deductions in Finland. Do you have to? like show your trading record in order to qualify for those? I would, I would believe so, yeah. I, I think, uh, well, it's a, another thing to apply um, and declare those deductions. You can do that, of course, you can declare. But I would say that if you don't provide all the evidence of each and every trade, you will significantly lower your chances of it to be approved. I would say that. Good question. Yes, another one. No, I don't think they have a different rule because the, the big problem with the regulation is that this new asset class that is cryptocurrency is, is being crammed into old regulations. So I don't, I don't think they have a very, very good addition. Yes? Was, was the last comment about this uh, Hungarian about that? Yes, uh, it, it is the best, best 20% deduction. But I think there are like at least two cases where uh, one was considered that the uh, hunger and all at the last days, and the other one when it's not. So we are pretty poor uh, area on, on that question. Yeah, that's 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 true. Um, it's not super clear because there are cases both uh, for and, and against, and I, I do think that those where the decision were negative, probably they didn't provide all the. Uh, required information or maybe there was just simply too much information for them to reach a actual maybe positive uh, yeah that's good that could be it as well any more questions here it is so just an addition if you have questions use the catch box because otherwise we don't hear it in the stream oh yeah good point uh, do you know any crypto friendly Finnish banks for cryptocurrency startups it's a great question. The answer is no. There's, there's no, absolutely no uh, crypto-friendly banks. I don't think almost anywhere, actually. Uh, I've been talking to these other guys from other projects, and it, it seems like uh, they are all complying to the same uh, anti-money lo laundering and terrorist uh, financing acts. So basically, their hands are pretty tied. And one reason why we are incorporating without a bank, personally. Good. Yeah, good question. And, and yeah, this, it's tricky if you want to do a, a fiat-based business on crypto. It's quite hard. Yes? So since we are in the EU, do you know whether there are plans to have an overall regulation in the EU? Because, I mean, it's quite simple if I know a friend in Italy. So I'm Italian, actually. But anyway, if you know me, for example, you can say, OK, open your, your own wallet, and you are just like a, a spokesperson. Uh, so without pay any, paying any taxes. So do you know whether there are plans in the EU for an overall regulation about taxes in these? Yeah, that's an excellent point. The, the, it is true that the, no, nobody in the world can prove that they don't have cryptocurrency. That's also something to keep in mind when, when, when you think about how, how you might be liable for this kind of... Uh, it's true that you, you, it is quite easy to avoid, actually. I'm not going to tell you exactly how now, but if you do some research, you, I'm sure you can figure it out. In terms of if there's going to be a favorable regulation uh, within EU, maybe, probably, that's certainly something that we, we're trying to affect because next year um, Finland is going to be the, the chair con uh, country of EU and, and if we can influence the decision makers here before that happens, maybe there's a chance that we can push, push through something. At least it's um, ambitious plan. One addition is the work again. So I actually talked with the vice president of European Economic and Social Committee, which is the body that the EU 
consult before they make uh, any decisions regarding finances or education. And the reaction towards blockchain and cryptocurrency was surprisingly positive from this person. Of course, it doesn't relate to the uh, overall views of the organization. However, uh, the picture I got is that EU does not want to make any rush decisions because it's obvious they don't know what's happening and they do realize it has a lot of business implication and they don't also want to uh, chase the business way. They, we came to the same conclusion that there should be some regulation to protect the individuals, but it should not chase away the businesses. However, he mentioned also that the EU is a very slow organization, especially requiring technology. So it's not likely to have uh, overall regulation in the close future, I would say. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, it, it is true that uh, things are moving quite fast in crypto, much faster than any other industry, and, and the regulation has a hard time following it. But there's also a difference between uh, prohib prohibitive uh, regulation and, and permissive regulation. I think permissive regulation is great because that makes the business legit, it uh, lets it grow. So I hope we are going to see some of that soon, that uh, maybe, maybe, we'll give, uh, maybe they'll give a grace period for um, cryptocurrencies for a while. This is all speculation, of course. Um, like uh, I, I think Ukraine did that. They gave five five years period for crypto cryptocurrency and blockchain projects with tra tax free in hopes of uh, luring some companies in, which I think is a good strategy. Yes. I think now we should have a break. We are all, all right. Long.